called Two Mrs. Gibsons. And this is the number two. Two. There's three different ways to spell the word two. This one is the number. The story is by Toyomi Igus, and the pictures are by Daryl Wells. That means this is our author, and this is our illustrator. Remember, the author writes the words, and the illustrator makes the pictures. Two Mrs. Gibson. There's a picture on the back that we can look at. Two Mrs. Gibsons. I once knew two Mrs. Gibsons. This Mrs. Gibson was tall. Her skin was the color of chocolate. She was born in America in a place called Tennessee. Tennessee is a state that's pretty far away from us. It would take probably four hours to get there on an airplane and airplanes go pretty fast. This Mrs. Gibson was small. Her skin was the color of vanilla. She was born in Japan in a place called Gifu. This Mrs. Gibson gave hugs that were like being wrapped up in a great big fat bearskin rug. Come here and give me some sugar, she would say. She looks like a really good hugger. This Mrs. Gibson gave hugs that were like being wrapped up in a light, down-filled comforter. At bedtime, she would stroke my hair and hum Sakura until I fall as fell asleep. I happen to know that Sakura is the name for a certain kind of flower called a cherry blossom. The Japanese word. Can you hear the motorcycle going by? This Mrs. Gibson was loud. She had a big laugh and a big voice, which would get louder when she was angry or when she was singing. And she seemed to be singing all the time. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. It's the song that she's singing. This Mrs. Gibson was quiet. She would cover her mouth when she laughed, so you could never see her teeth. And when she was angry, she'd get even quieter. This Mrs. Gibson had small hands that could make the littlest, prettiest strokes of a pen when she would write our names in Japanese. Kumiki, Akimi, Toyomi, Yoshiteru. This Mrs. Gibson had big hands. They looked like they covered all the keys on the piano when she played her favorite spirituals. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Sometimes this Mrs. Gibson would look kind of sad and then she would let me dress up in one of the kimonos she had packed away in an old trunk. These very special, she would say as she tied the obi around my waist, don't get dirty. A kimono is a traditional Japanese robe. They're very beautiful and they're made from a special fabric called silk. The other Mrs. Gibson's clothes were much too big for me to dress up in, but I'd like to wear her hat, or her fancy hats. This is my Sunday go to meetin' hat, she would say as she'd take the long pointy hat pin out of my hand. Don't get it dirty now. In the evening in the garden, this Mrs. Gibson would help me make magical lamps by catching fireflies and putting them in a jelly jar. They would glow and glow and then we let them go. Fireflies are a special kind of insect that actually light up like a light bulb. They're really teeny tiny. They light up just for a couple seconds at a time. Unfortunately, they don't live where we live, so there's no fireflies in California. But in other parts of the United States, you're able to find them, and you can even catch them and put them in a jelly jar, and they'll light up. But always let them go.
Later at dinner time, this Mrs. Gibson would make more magic. Her hands would turn little bits of napkins into a whole flock of long-necked cranes. We would throw them into the air where they would fly high and then flutter down to the ground. Happy birds, she would always say. This Mrs. Gibson always had a pot of rice cooking. We would eat it with bits of meat and vegetables on it with plenty of shoyu. Anytime we were hungry, she could take her long chopsticks and stir up dinner in the blink of an eye. It's very quickly. This Mrs. Gibson always had a pot of greens cooking. Turnip greens, dandelion greens, mustard greens from the garden. Everything she cooked seemed to take a long, long time. Sounds like they're both really good cooks, though. This Mrs. Mrs. Gibson had short, curly hair that she would oil and braid up every night while she listened to the radio. She liked to braid my hair, too, but she would always give me one big, fat braid that would hang down over my forehead. This is there. Radio. This is kind of an old style of radio. I didn't like that braid, so I would go to the other Mrs. Gibson and she'd take it out. This Mrs. Gibson used to have long, stick straight hair, but she cut it short and tried to make it curly. She said she wanted to be more American. This Mrs. Gibson's other name was Kazumi. Everyone called her Kaz or Connie because they couldn't pronou pronounce Kazumi. I called her Mommy because she was my mother. This Mrs. Gibson's other name was Viola. Everyone called her Vi or Reverend Gibson because she was a church minister. I called her Nanny because she was my grandmother. Two Mrs. Gibsons. I once knew two Mrs. Gibsons. They were very different, but they had a lot in common. They both loved my daddy and they both loved me. So this is our narrator. And this is her mom, Mrs. Gibson, or Kaz. And I think this might be her dad, which would make him Mr. Gibson. And I think that that might mean that this Mrs. Gibson is his mom. So her grandma and her mom and her dad. A beautiful family. And that is the end of our book. Two Mrs. Gibson's.